In this episode, we're going to talk about how many books I'm reading, why I decided to go virtual, and how this guy went from zero to crushing it in five years. watching episode number 21 of Woo! the Motivate with Mike show. <laughs> and uh, my name is Mike Mazik, just in case you were wondering. And today I've got a very special guest of mine. His name is Stephen Taylor. What's up, everybody? And I'm really excited to have Stephen on board. Um, Stephen is an agent, so he works at my company within my brokerage. And I'm excited because, like, you, how, how long has it been since you've worked for me? Five years. Five years. Okay, so five years ago, five long years. I, I still <laughs> remember when Stephen strolled in to our very first meeting, team meeting. Okay, and I think you were wearing like what, like a shorts and tank top and flip flops flip or something. No, no, the story gets worse every time you tell it. The story gets worse. Look, I was wearing jeans. I was wearing some flip flops. That's true. And uh, you looked at me and you said. You ever wear this again, you're out. Like, I just remember that. We were doing this one-on-one -on -one with every agent, and I was like, I remember I was agent number eight, you know? And I was like, ooh, number eight, what does this even mean? And of course, at that time, you're like, hey man, you can only take Spanish leads because you are not ready. Yeah. And I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. I did not hire rookie agents in the beginning, but I, I gave this, this guy a shot. I don't even know why. I don't know how. I, I don't know why either. But, um, so here we are, and I'm excited because we're five years later. Um, you came on as, as a brand new rookie to real estate, totally, right? And here you are five years later. You're in the top, what, two in the company? Are you number one right I, now? I was number one through July, I think. And I think I got overtaken, but we will see what happens. So he came on as a rookie. We're five years later. He's number one in the entire company right now. Um, and we've got some solid producers that are selling a lot of homes. Um, and I've seen that, you know, this progression, you know, from watching you and working with you. And it hasn't all been like straight up, right? Um, but here you are five years later, you're making phenomenal money. Um, you've got phenomenal quality of life. I think you've actually gone on more vacations than I have <laughs> over, over the last 12 months. Um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about that, but I wanted to kind of talk about the fact that the first couple years, I know that like there's been, I feel like I could divide your career into two halves almost. Yes. And there was a lot of struggle as you were launching your business, um, and then there's been a phenomenal season of harvest, but somewhere in the middle, right, there was this epiphany of sorts that you had, and I remember because you went to a real estate conference, and you came back, and it was like, like the scales had fallen off of your eyes, and you, the blind, you were, no, it was like, you know, I once was blind, but now I see, the song Amazing Grace. And it was literally like a 180 from the, I feel like from that time forward, are you able to tell us a little bit more about like, what was that epiphany? What was it that, you know, for the viewers out there that are struggling and no matter what business they're in, you know, what was the epiphany that, that changed, was the game changer for you? It was investing in me. Uh, it was hitting rock bottom, uh, literally just, I mean, rock bottom. I had to sell my house to get out from underneath my debt. Um, this was three years ago. I mean, I, and what's funny is like, I, I'll, you know, somebody will ask me like, Hey, what, what in the world? Like, what's the secret sauce? You know, like, what, what do we need to be doing? And I'm like, man, you need to be consistent. That's all you gotta do. And, um, and I'll, I'll say this, the other thing, the big epiphany was this. Um, I was not performing as a man, uh, the way that I should for my family. I wasn't providing, I was lazy. I was undisciplined, I was inconsistent, and I, did, I had a lot of dreams and I was going after every single one of them. Mm. I wasn't focused. And how do we know this? Because this man right here called me into his office at least three times and was like, what are you doing? 
<laughs> or it's actually, what are you not doing? And I, every time I'd just be like walking in like a little puppy dog between my legs going across from his desk and he'd look like, the, you know, just a big, huge guy. And I'm sitting here like, I don't know, man. And, um, but I think what changed was I had to hit rock bottom and, and it had to hit me right between the eyes. I had an ego uh, that I didn't even know I had. And um, I had a little bit too much pride. And what ended up happening was um, I had to, I had to, to stay where I was and make things better, I had to change. Mm. So you took responsibility. Yeah. It was, I mean, huh, that's an understatement. I mean, I had to change everything. Um, and it started with me. And um, I'll never forget for two weeks while my house was not getting an offer when it should have gotten an offer right away. I was just dry heaving in my bathroom. Just, I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping. All I wanted to do was just throw up and I couldn't even do that because I was so stressed and so down on my luck, it felt, that I finally, things kind of changed uh, when I went to this real estate conference and it's about uh, just, you know, working on yourself and um, and I put a game plan together to go generate, you know, I basically, uh, you know, this is the way I look at it. If uh, you're the NFL and I'm a, a team in the NFL and I want to get to the Super Bowl every year, <laughs> the Patriots, um, how do I... How do I do that? How do I get from losing, losing, not just losing, but being like the Cleveland Browns of every single year that, of the last seven, you know, being last place to go and I'm changing everything. Well, the rules of your, of, of the brokerage never changed, right? No. But I had to change the rules in which I operated where it used to be before and, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but before it was, you were the cake. Right, I, I was eating off your all the crumbs off of your table, yeah. okay, and I was treating that like it was the cake. And there and and the truth is, um, when I realized that the power is generating my own sphere business, and then using your business and all of the amenities that come with the company, everything changed. My commission checks went higher, my production went higher because I started getting and you know kind of salivating over like what could be I started setting goals income goals and every year since then really every year as much as I struggled I have made more money every year since I've started in real estate this year included that's phenomenal that's phenomenal and I can identify with that because um, I mean I, I've been where you were at I, I a lot of people think that I, I, I've heard n numerous times that I was like, uh, I heard I was a trust fund baby, that, that, that like I literally had all this money whenever I got started in real estate and all that kind of stuff, and those things, are, they're just not true. Um, and I literally, I mean, I was the exact opposite. I mean, w when my wife met me, I remember I was driving a Mazda B2200 little red pickup with like 300,000 miles on it. And, this rope hanging out the back, dragging on the, you know, dragging on the street as I was, you know, driving down the street. We had just bought and bought a house, um, and I had bills piled high. I mean, I didn't have a choice. Like, failure was not an option for me, and I had the same similar, um, I remember it, I always did well, but there was a time period where I hit rock bottom, mm -hmm. and I realized that I had to take responsibility for some areas of my life that, um, I just love taking responsibility and man, we're going deep Whoa. here today. Like, wow. <laughs> um, and you know, I, um, I, re I remember journaling, uh, journaling during that time. I had underestimated the amount of work that was required to be a man. Hmm. Like that, that was, I just drastically underestimated the amount of work that it took to be a man. Yep. And um, so anyway, a, Let's progress also into, I know that um, one of the things that you've, you've been knocking out of the park lately is door knocking, okay? Um, My favorite thing to do in the world. <laughs> favorite thing to do in the world. So uh, I did a little bit of door knocking whenever I started. Um, but so for the agents out there, for really for any sale, because all sales is a contact sport, when I started, I knocked on my fair share of doors. But... Why did you choose door knocking? Like out of all the things you could have done, like why door knocking? Two reasons. One, 
I had no choice and I had no money to market myself. So that's one. And then number two, it was the fastest way I knew how to get a listing. Mm. And the product is right there. And yet as a realtor for three years before that, I'm driving past every home on the street. And I had somebody say um, one time, when I, another realtor while I was in the car, they're like 6,000, 9,000, 4,000, 3,000, every house we passed. And I was just blown away by the fact that nobody is going to meet these people. And uh, for me, uh, it was free. So that was number one. And I needed, I didn't have money. So I, that was free. And uh, I wanted listings. And I wanted them bad. Yeah. That's awesome. And that's, um, you know, one of the, the reason why I chose Door Knocking was kind of the same thing in that I wasn't a trust fund baby. And um, I knew that I could either trade my time for leads or I could trade my money for leads. I didn't have money, so I just I chose that to trade it. my time. Um, and I went out and I knocked on doors. And I think the reason why I chose it was because it was, I understood it. Like, like that's the reason why, because I understood that if I knocked on 20 doors, mm -hmm. I knew that three to four of those people were going to turn into leads. The, the bottom line is if I, have, I had knocked on 20 doors, asked 20 people if they were thinking about buying or selling a home in the next six months, that I was going to get three to four of them that would say yes. Yeah. And out of those three to four, I would I knew that, okay, well, I, was, I would be able to set an appointment with one to two of them if I go on X number of appointments. And I do, you know, I do this every week, and I go on X number of appointments a month. That's going to turn into X number of listings. And X number of listings is going to turn into X number of closings. And so it just, it made sense to me. I was like, well, I'll just go out and knock on doors and make contact. Like, it's so simple. Like, but sometimes we just overcomplicate this entire real estate business. But, um, okay, well, hey, let's get into some viewer questions. Darian, what do you got for us? David Meyer asks, what are the benefits of running a virtual office as opposed to having a physical location? That's a great question. Um, I'll tell you, David, uh, if you're watching the show right now, uh, um, I chose to go virtual. Number one, in the beginning, it was, it was merely overhead. I just wanted to save money. Um, and so number one benefit is you're going to save, save money, which means you have more money to invest into other areas of your business. Um, so first and foremost, you're going to save a lot of money. Secondly, I would tell you, and this is one of the biggest things that I found, David, is that the virtual concept makes it easier to scale the business. So it makes it easier to grow because if I would have built a business that was based around having this really tricked out uh, Google-like office, which was originally my goal, um, what would happen is that I would have built a model that was contingent upon that office. And then every time I want to grow into this market and this market and this market, I'd have to go get another office. I'd have to sign another big lease. I'd have to furnish another office. I'm going to have more overhead. And I'm going to have to do that in literally like every other city that I want to go to. If I can build a model that is completely virtual, that is not based around an office, I can literally scale like at the speed of light. And so that's one of the biggest benefits. So it's saving the overhead and it's the ability to grow at a much faster pace and with much less risk than my competition. If, awesome. I, can, if I can add to that yeah. as an agent, it's very simple. I don't, I want to pay for my mileage from my house to my appointments and back. I don't want to have to start from the office because if you're, if you have an office then, and you're using it and you're running to it, the mileage doesn't start until the office to the appointment not from your house. So for me, it saves me a lot of money when I have to turn that in for taxes. Good. Good stuff. Good stuff. What's the next one, Darren? Next question is from David Bass. If there's one thing you could have told yourself 13 years ago that would have saved you time or sped up your success, what would it be? One thing I could have told myself 13 years ago. So we'll hit you with this one on five years ago since you've been in the business okay. five. Um, one thing that I could have told myself 13 years ago, um, I think, okay, I, I, I know what this is. Um, it's, I would have been much, I, I would have told myself to be much, much, much leaner 
with my personal finances at the beginning of my career. I think that because the bottom line is, is that, yeah, you might have two accounts, business and personal, okay, and you might say that they're separate, but we all know it's, it's, it's all your money, right? And, and the less money that you need on the personal side in order for you to live, the more money that you can then invest into the business and you're gonna grow, I mean, the business grows, it compounds, like it's like interest, and the more that you can invest in those early stages, the bigger that snowball is gonna get, the faster it's gonna get, and that was one of the big mistakes that I think, if I had to do something over, you know, over again, I probably would have, I would have just, I would have been leaner, a leaner on the personal side so that I could have just poured in more and more and more into the business in those early years. What do you, what do you think? Uh, so, yeah, um, you know, mine's going to be on a smaller scale than that, uh, but I will say this, uh, I should have listened to my mom, okay? My mom, who has no real estate experience whatsoever, told me when I jumped from my job, and I remember it like it was clear as day, I jumped from my job to full-time real estate because I had a deadline. M Mike said by April 15th, I'll never forget. I was like, dang, God, that's the same day as tax. You know, the taxes are due. I'm like, God dang, man, all at one time. Um, but she said this, she goes, Stephen, you are going to have to build your own schedule and you're going to have to be really good at it. And I said, oh, right, mom. Yeah, that's the point. Like I can build my own schedule, of course. <laughs> and I had no idea. I mean, my schedule consists of now, Monday through Friday, I'm up by 530 at my desk, 530. That's now I will say this, that is, I'm, I'm practicing to become the person I want to become right now. So am I the person I want to become? Absolutely not. But the person that I want to become wakes up at 5.30 and is at his desk. He's, you know, I do worship in Bible time, uh, 5.30 to 6. And then 6 to 6.15, I'm writing down my must-dos for the day. By 6.15 uh, to 6.30, I'm emailing all of my clients under contracts. I'll even send them texts. So that way I know that I've contacted them already and they know I'm working. And then by 6.30 to, seven, uh, to 6.45, I'm finishing up my to-do list for the day. 6.45, I'm running. I mean, I know where I'm supposed to be. Whereas before, I had no idea where I needed to be. It was like, what does alignment look like? I don't know. But now it's, what does alignment look like? If Steven's out of alignment and I'm over here and alignment's here, I'm going to go, oh, there's alignment. Boom. So am I perfect? Absolutely not. Do I get out of alignment? All day long. But I know what alignment looks like. And as long as my schedule says so, I know where I gotta be. That's good stuff. Good answer. That's good stuff. Okay, do we have time for one more? Uh, yeah, this one's a real quick one, actually. Final questions from Lisa Schrader. How many books do you read at a time? You wanna answer that? <laughs> one, 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 book. one book. I'm not doing this, you know, it's one book at a time. Okay, so, well, I guess, I really, I think to answer the question, Lisa, the way that I think you're wanting to know, I, I read two books at a time. If you want to count the Bible, it's three. Um, but I think you're not really counting that. So I read two books at a time. And the reason why is because I cannot read a business book at night. Um, I, I just can't. If I read a business book past 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night, my mind starts going like 190 miles an hour. And I'll be up literally all night long. And so the best thing for me is I, I will usually read some type of spiritual book. Um, right now I'm reading the journal of a, a missionary in the 1700s, a guy by the name of David Brainerd, phenomenal um, journal. But you know that will tend to bore into me, but it also puts me to sleep pretty quick. Um, and then in the first part of the day, I'll read my, my business book and whatever I'm reading there. So two books at a time. And that's what we got for you folks today. We'll wrap it up. I just want to say, so... <clears throat> For, is there, for anybody that wants to connect with you, follow you, or is there anything um, that you would say to the real estate agent community out there? I mean, I know you're building a team, you know, did you, you know, what, is there any parting thoughts or anything, you know, a little plug here for you that you'd like to say? Uh, you know, uh, I'm obviously driving traffic to my Facebook page from that. Um, I'm growing uh, a YouTube channel so that I can, you know, embed some links in there and people can go from my Facebook business page, not my personal page, to follow me. 
Um, you know, there's really not much to follow other than just to keep an eye out because at some point, I think it, the person who I'm become, trying to become is going to show its pretty or ugly face and it's going to be noticed and uh, people are going to start. So I think it's, it's one of those, like, if you want to just do it right now, it's fine. I'm not necessarily on the level that you're at with that, but I, I obviously want to. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, if you're watching right now, I just want to encourage you to like it, subscribe to the page, and most importantly, I need your questions. I need questions if I want to keep this show going. I want uh, relevant questions to what's going on right now in your life, whether it is business, personal, financial, fitness. A lot of you know that fitness is a big part of my life, uh, my spirituality, integrating that into my business, you know, just all of it. Uh, I just want some questions, so something that can give me some great content, I can bring in some great speakers and some great guests, so give me one question right now if you're watching, and that's all I got for you.